Hey, 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 welcome back to another edition of the Sean Zilla Art Show. There he is. I see a Mac. I see a Mac attack behind you. <laughs> He's like, close the door. You're bothering me, old man. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, he's gonna start saying "Okay, Boomer" any day now. Oh, that's the that's Thursday night. Sorry. I know, I know. I, this is his last week of school, man. He's like, he's done. He's he's over with. He's like, man, this shit. I'm I'm out of here. So, what you're working on tonight? Uh, is this a Wonder Woman or something? This is Sabine Wren. <laughs> Do you know who you know Sabine, right? You watched Rebels, didn't you? Yeah. This is uh mm -hmm. a, little, yeah. a little cute female Mandalorian. Yeah. Since this is since this is the May. This is the May. Mm-hmm. This is the May and next month is the gay. Yeah, pretty much. That's right, Pride Month. Uh Uh, next month is also my lady's birthday, and then the day after is my daughter's birthday. Oh, that's cool. That's convenient. Well, not really. I, I thought my daughter would be like, think it was cool that, you know, dad's girlfriend had a birthday like the day before hers. She's like, Pfft. you know. She's like, better not encroach upon my gifts, yo. Yeah, right. <clears throat> well, so what you been up to, man? Uh, just that. Uh, we got the uh, yearly apartment inspection out of the way. And apparently... Either everybody else was cleaning their apartment for the inspection or a few people were moving out. And for some reason, even though today was Monday, the uh, the trash company didn't come and empty their dumpster. Or uh, the fact that the dumpster was so full, so everybody was like, I'm not bringing this crap back in my house. And they threw it all like... They started throwing it like all to the side, both sides of the dumpster. And then it got like in front. And if there's like one bag in front of the dumpster, like, nope, we can't pick it up. And he'll just keep, he'll just circle, he'll just circle back like Jen Saki, the evil peppermint patty, and, uh, <laughs> and, and leave. Uh, yet again, like Jen Saki with, uh, with somebody who, uh, says uh unless our melatonin in our skin is makes us dark uh we're all racist oh well this is gonna be fun you know mm. lovely So, uh, Global Frequency there, uh, Neff and Freak Girl are interviewing, uh, Pizza Medi. Who? Pizza Medi. He's the, uh, owner and creator of Alterna Comics. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, who is, who is known as Pizza Medi or Pete Samedi? He's a pair in New Hampshire, I think. Yes, he is. Oh. He's, he's out of the New Hampshire's. Well, as long as he's not in the old Hampshire. No. I would hate to be up in the old Hampshire. 
Yeah. Well, I had a couple of shows this week. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, apparently, last week, last weekend was a shit show. Yeah. Um, more. Well, okay. So, like, I learned a few things. Um, I will not be doing anything else that has the word carnival or fair or anything like that in it. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't think I will. Um, and I, I was angry with uh, Horn Lake events, the the people who were putting on the thing. The but then I found out, yes. But then I found out that it was not exactly their fault. And they were rather upset with the uh, carnies themselves for for lack of a better term um so yeah um uh, basically what it was was um i've known a lot of people who've done like the mid-south fair delta fair things like that so and they've all done very well at those so i was like yeah let's let's do this and it was a really cheap fee to do the thing I mean, it was like fifty dollars for four days. I mean, it was crazy, crazy cheap. Mm. So, um, I, I had high hopes, and those hopes were dashed fairly quickly, um, because uh, they had all the vendors like kind of off to the side, like at the kids' table, like a bunch of step kids, and. Um, you know, there was like no traffic where we were at or anything like that. And it rained out one day. The first day of it, we were told we couldn't bend. But then we you know, found out later that, oh, yeah, 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 you could have. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, that's, that's fine. Um, and then I did the, the full moon market last night, which was basically an art show at a bar uh, that has a really great outdoor patio that's like covered and closed off and stuff and it was really cool and that was uh, that was a fun time some live music and whatnot so you were entertained but uh, the important question is uh, did the uh did the art and jam session uh the art and jam did, session, session. Did the art and jam session uh do anything it, for your career did it bear financial fruit um that's um in the words of wayne from letter kenny um uh, hard no um <laughs> no okay so it didn't do terrible I just, um, I learned that when I'm doing like an artsy fair like that to set up like I'm doing an artsy fair like that rather than using the same setup that I would at, say, a con. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people were more look, looking for more um, of canvas, large size originals and stuff like that than Prince of Deadpool. And um, so I learned, um, and I mean, I get to go back next month for free because, you know, they, they have a nice little rule that if you don't do extremely well, you can come back the next month with uh, no fee. So um, by then I will be a little bit better prepared for their particular brand of fuckery. Um, and not just that, uh, it's free and and it's a night out. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, it was a fun time. I got to hang out with a bunch of people. Um, I uh, ended up with some news last night. There is a art gallery in 
the greater Memphis area called the, it's, um, it's adjacent to a tattoo shop. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, nice. Well, like a nicer tattoo shop. Uh, it's called the, the rogue tattooery and art expo. And, uh, they are apparently large fans of mine, uh, which is good. Good to know. Cause I sure as hell wasn't feeling much love from, you know, other people last night. And, um, they will be exhibiting and carrying some of my work there. Wow. Great. Yeah. And of course, you know, they're going to, they're going to get a little, a little slice off the cheese too. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't expect them to do it for free, but so. yeah, it's, you know, there's things happening and it's real easy to get discouraged. And believe me, I wanted to, to burn down the Magnolia Fest. Um, <laughs> but I chose not to. You know, I chose peace. That's and, good because uh, I, I would have been I would have been pissed if I didn't get to uh partake in in you know a night of destruction with you or something, yeah. I mean I I can fuck some shit up. <laughs> I know. And uh you know, when I messaged them the first night, I was like, hey, you know, uh, it gets kind of dark. Uh, any chance of us getting, like, electricity out of these booths so, you know, we can maybe run some lights? And they're like, oh, you know, feel free to bring a generator. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what, Cockle, feel free to buy one for me. <laughs> Yeah, you want you want extra exhibitors at your fair to keep people there longer, so you can chill them. But you don't want to do anything for it. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, it it could it have been better? Absolutely. Um, could it have been worse? Absolutely. And you know what they say, man: either you win or you learn. I learned because I damn sure didn't win. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are, there are things happening that you know will will be good. Next month, I will be doing the, the full moon again. Mm -hmm. um, I've got another vendor market that I'm doing. See, I got spoiled because I did a, a couple of little vendor markets that I really didn't expect to do well, and they mm -hmm. did great. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm starting to believe my own hype a little bit. And, I learned, so.
So, uh, in preparation for the uh, the uh, the art and jam session, does that mean you're going to be doing uh, some canvas work? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be doing some more large format canvas stuff. I'm still going to bring some prints, but you know, I'm going to I'm going to definitely set it up more like a you know like a trippy hippie art festival not exactly like that because i can't i can't bring myself to do all that shit but you know just setting it up with some more canvas stuff i've got these four uh 10 by 20 canvases that i'm really like kind of torn on what i'm going to paint on them but i think i'm going to do something ninja turtle related with them because you know i mean it's it's pop culture but it's it, you know, that's what I do, and, you know, I'm not going to start, you know, trying to be like all these other people and just do basically a bunch of shit for high school dorm rooms, or not high school, but college dorm rooms, you know, it's like we get it, like Van Gogh. Leave that to me, because next month is when uh, I go live on Doc's channel, and uh, I am looking forward to that, by the way. It's going to be a mess. I still got to clean, like everything out we did a lot uh we did a lot today uh i got rid of a whole bunch of crap that was in a bin next to my death next to the, where i'm sitting now uh and uh that i had asked my uh my helper during the day to throw out a whole bunch of times and he said yeah okay i'll get it next time and never next time never happened but he he does way too much already so uh we got rid of that and packed up some more toys in a bin um we uh i cleared off the little dinky table that was next to me and we put the uh, we put a uh, an actual end table next to my recliner and moved, moved some comics around and depending on whether or not i land in the hospital uh, later on today or tomorrow. Uh, well, I really hope you don't. Stuff. I hope I don't either. Um, I mean, I wish I knew where the extra uh, antibiotic pills were, where I kept them, because I'd be like, I'll just stop taking them now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Save the step. So it might not be too dark, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. So I came across the first piece of original art I bought online. Oh, yeah? And I used to keep it kind of like on the, on the second to bottom shelf in like one of my bookcases that don't exist anymore. Oh. And... My daughter used to set up her little desk next to next to my computer desk and, you know, color and draw and everything while she was watching her cartoons. And she put a cup of water on it. I go, be careful with that. Don't spill it. I won't, Daddy. I'll be careful. She's like four or five. And as soon as you said it. And just as I said it, boom. Three seconds later, it went over, and it hit this piece. So it's got mm. the memory of my daughter destroying the first original piece of art I bought. Um, 
so it's got it's got like water stains on it but it's a good memory so i don't want to get rid of it and it's the first piece that i bought online so i don't want to get rid of it yeah it's a it's a harley p it's a harley quinn piece and i bought it off a guy up in canada i think it actually cost me more for the shipping than it did for the art oh sure I just uh, shipped some stuff to Canada, and um, I'm going to say that UPS is your friend uh, because, yeah, um, it didn't cost me a whole lot to ship it, so that was good, but... And it seems to have gotten there in a timely manner. So, for that. Let's use. Some of these implements here. Mm -hmm. This is about Mandalorians, man, with all their battle damage on their armor. Oh, it's because they do shit. I gotcha. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't fuck around. So just um, the kids went and saw Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And um, one good thing has really come of that. They are all like going through my boxes trying to find Doctor Strange comics <laughs> to check out because they're like really into Doctor Strange now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, you can't get mad at that at all. So they're going through the comic books right. trying to read more Doctor Strange adventures. Cool. Mm -hmm. You checked out the new movie yet? The what? Have you checked out Multiverse of Madness yet? No. I bet you've seen the spoilers, though. Uh, some. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the uh, speaking of spoilers, the next uh, season of uh, Cobra Kai is going to be in uh, September. I am here for it. I am absolutely ready for that. Because uh, I killed that whole last season in one day. And you did too, didn't you? What's that? You killed the whole last season in one day? Oh, yeah. I got in trouble because I, I started watching it before. Uh, she got out of bed, so. 
she woke up and she came out of the kitchen. What are you watching? Oh, great. Now you've ruined it. I go, no, I will happily go back and watch the first two episodes with you again. You're you're among friends. You can say she cussed you. She said mm-hmm. you motherfucker. <laughs> I did find a few things. I found like my my Star Trek communicator microphone. That's cool. Yeah. Unless you unless you game with me or if I started using it like on on streams before I said the first thing, I would actually flip it open like a communicator and then everybody <laughs> on the stream would hear the chirp chirp chirping. The only sad thing is there's a chip in there that will uh just play like a bunch of random uh, sound bites from the original series. Uh, but it doesn't broadcast them out. Nobody else can hear them. I go, oh, well, that sucks. So I finally surpassed a thousand followers on the on the TikTok. Oh, you can go live now. Yeah. I haven't yet, but I thought about it a couple times. Um Yeah, that's like, that's like multiple camera <laughs> angles. So you would need The camera that's just like on the art that you're doing mm-hmm. to be on TikTok. Uh, but we'd also need him need it here. Uh, it dawned on me there was a whoa uh, lightning and thunder oh, that's what you get for talking shit about the Love and Thunder trailer mm-hmm. Love and Thunder tits Right. Will I watch it? Yeah, for free. Uh, I will not pay to watch that. Like the first Thor movie was good, and after that, they were kind of. I dug uh, Ragnarok. I thought Ragnarok was cool, but you know. see, we liked Ragnarok because Hulk was in it. But what they tried to do with Ragnarok is. Let's throw Hulk into Planet Hulk. I mean, let's throw Thor into Planet Hulk and see what happens. Right. Since we've all already given given him Hulk's given Thor Hulk sidekicks already from that. So and I'm like, oh. So, not that I can go to Boston because it's too far for 
the transport company. But apparently, something to keep an eye out for is uh, Gina Carano is on the con circuit. I saw that. Now, it's, I guess she's appearing at the fan expos. So mm -hmm. wherever they are, I know Boston Comic Con sold out to uh, Fan Expo, so it became Boston Fan Expo. It's the same thing. If, yeah, uh, a little bit of comics and all about celebrities so you can cash in on the big thing. Cause, well, yeah. Like, they make their own... They'll make their own prices, but you got to buy tickets ahead of time to even get us an autograph. So uh, the convention upcharges you like the ticket master fee for every ticket for photos and autographs and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so they make 20 bucks off of every one of those. Now, I remember years ago so like 2014 2015 there was a, a con that uh was between me and boston that i had gone to a couple of times and uh and i forget what i was talking about wow <laughs> I have all time. I have Alzheimer's, but at least I don't have Alzheimer's. I got line from waiting about Alzheimer's. It's cool. Oh, oh, that's that's what I that's where I was going. Um, Hulk Hogan actually was there. Oh, sweet. They had about ten thousand people waiting in line to meet him for 30 seconds. Whether it was for an autograph and a picture or just a picture or just an autograph. Keep in mind, the autograph is per item. So if you bring a few items, you got to pay for each one. Jesus. Now, they were, this this is like four four lanes of traffic. So there's four rows of people across. And then it went from the farthest point on the convention floor in like a private double-doored room out and around almost to the front entrance. So there, there were at least 10,000 10, people in line. Hulk Hogan's price per person, per item, you know, per, per, uh, per item line, you know, mm -hmm. picture or, or autograph. And of course, everybody's gonna want a picture and an autograph. But for each one of those is a hundred dollars. That's actually less than I thought it would be. Um, it's still way more than I would pay. So that's Hogan got a hundred dollars a person, right? But. But. The convention was getting $25 service fee for each ticket. And that's not coming out of Hulk's end. No, that's on top of Hulk's end. So he's got his two or three like personal handlers and security with him. <laughs> Which is really just Brutus Beefcake and Brian Knobs. 
maybe Jimmy Hart or Eric Bischoff at this point. No, because these these guys were young and in shape. Oh, okay. Um. Um. So. Uh, and he, and one of those guys is just sitting there with a clicker. Every time somebody comes in and gets introduced to Hulk, click. So they multiply that times a hundred at the end of the day. And, you know, when they hand him the envelope for the day, it better that match. envelope needs to, needs to have that, that matching cash flow. Wouldn't it be nice to be that rich and famous? Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody's gonna pay for my signature right now. No, that's why it's included for the price of the uh, art. Very much so. But you know who's really cool? Jim Ballant. Remember Jim Ballant? Oh yeah, I love Jim. Jim and Holly, yeah. So Jim doesn't charge for autographs at the con. Nope. He show, and he, he'll do a sketch for you, too. I don't know if he charges for the sketch. I, I think he, he charges for the sketch. Here's here's a funny thing about Jim Ballant. Like, of course, we all know he does. He's got that. I want I wouldn't call it a new series, but basically an ongoing series since he launched his comic book company. Yeah. Right, the the tarot, the witch of the uh, the witch of the black rose, whatever. I've got it. I've got like I've got like a number one sitting over on the couch. Um, but uh, um, so if you you can order stuff like ahead of time, and he does. You know, you can buy like reg the regular issues, uh, you know, the subscriber ones where uh, you basically buy, you, you're buying a graphic novel size one. So you're buying one that's like a trade that's got like a few issues in it. And mm -hmm. it comes with, with a, basically, a, I I'll just call it a, a tip and plate. It's a, it's a print, but it's like the size of the book and it comes, so the, the, tr the the trade comes uh, bagged and boarded, and on the back side of the board is where they put this, you know, little mini print. Hmm. And uh, and you can get that signed, but if you order something from him signed from his website he charges if you show up to the convention he will sign it for free well i mean i, I get that um somewhere in one of my many bin many toy bins i've actually got that exclusive like uh Batman and Catwoman with action figures like the twelve inch ones, mm -hmm. where uh, Catwoman is modeled after his redesign of Catwoman with the with the thigh high black leather boots and gloves with the uh, yeah with the purple with the purple onesie there. Yeah, sweet baby Jesus. I mean, does it get better than his Catwoman? No, uh, because what happens is he draws all of his cat, all his Catwoman picture drawn naked with predominant nipples. And then he sadly has to color in over them because, but he'll sit there on a plane on the way to someplace and do like a complete thing. And if he sees somebody, you know, that you know is famous on the plane 
he'll draw something for them and he'll just walk over and be like, hi, I'm Bat Jim. Because <laughs> he still dresses up in his Batman costume for Halloween. And he has a full he has a full kiss costume with like original kiss boots and everything from, from the boys. That's nice that he does Cause, that. Because he's he's done a bunch of stuff for Kiss, so he's done a bunch of like variant covers for their books. I'm not a big Kiss fan, but I would do stuff for Gene Simmons in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, they they seem to actually, like, I don't know, they seem to, to really like the people who do stuff for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll promote you and something like that. I remember them, there's a video on YouTube of them uh, doing a, sh uh, a show from, like, I think 2015 or 2016 or something. It's like a few a few years ago, whatever it was, uh -huh. um, and they stopped the show and brought some people out on stage because they had been donating um like their gate money from that tour uh, to like uh, a veteran society. People that helped, uh, you know, disa disabled vets and uh, and other veterans with like PTSD and you know other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So and they stopped and they made like this huge donation of like I don't know I think it was like a half million dollars. Jeez. A lot of fucking dollars, and you know they're 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 flying old glory on the stage, and I only went to see him once. You know, I'm, uh, I'm one I'm one of their thirty seven farewell tours. Uh, yeah. spe speaking of which, White Snake is now on a farewell tour. Oh, I didn't know they. I didn't know they're they still had alive. And, and you know what? I love White Snake. Okay? It's like I really we're all it. broke. Let's go on a farewell tour. But why? It works for Motley Crue. Well, they're afraid that Vince is not is definitely not in shape, is not in touring shape, and uh, could possibly die before the tour is over. But right. I would love to see that tour. Oh, the one with uh, Poison, Def Leppard, Motley Crue, and Joan Jett? Oh, yeah. Do you know that is actually coming? And they're, they're coming for three days to play at Fenway Park. Jeez. And even nosebleed seats are like over five hundred bucks. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and the week before they play there, uh, a certain beetle is going to be there playing for a weekend too. <coughs> oh, yeah. He, he does? No, no, no. They fired him. Paul, I sold all my rights to Michael Jackson McCartney. Uh, he didn't sell them willingly. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's still amazing that he's still alive. He must come... Him and Keith Richards must come from the same gene pool because Richards should have been dead a long time ago. Richards will outlive the fall. Mm -hmm.
I'm going to have to look around for that that notebook because I'm not sure if I lost the the list that Doc told me to buy. I mean, worst case scenario is going to message him and he'll tell you again. Yeah, I know. Unless you know you don't want to. You don't want to. Get off. Uh, I I don't see that pissing Doc off. I've gotten the list off him three times already. Twice in, twice in Twitter DMs. Yeah, he's got it memorized. Uh, twice in Twitter DMs that I forgot why I was chatting with him. I opened up my book at it, and it's not there because I've sent like 19 other messages to him. And uh, I go, no, we're just chit-chatting. I don't need this one. Delete. And I'm like, five minutes. The list! Damn. And then damn part two, I did it again. Damn two, electric boogaloo? Yeah, pretty much. Well, did you see there's going to be a season two of He Man? <laughs> I love that you hate it. You have to admit the second half was better than the first. Or did you watch the second half? Yeah, I did. Okay. I liked parts. Well, of course, I like I like the Orco part, but the fact that he's still dead. No, he's not. Oh, yeah, that's right. Everybody, nobody dies. No, that's not true. Cool. Yeah. But um, Evil Lynn stopped him from going to the underworld. Or, you know, going to the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the part that I was getting kind of like, it was, there was more heel turns and like, Uneasy alliances than on SmackDown. Speaking of, have you watched that lately? Nope. Nope. I haven't either. Uh, I know they're bringing Alexa Bliss back. Yeah, she's back. Um, Charlotte's gone and pregnant, most likely. Um, and uh, Roman Ronda Rousey. Roman Reigns is leaving. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be gone for a whole, I mean, like, for good, I mean, obviously. But. They're, they're saying it's one thing, but uh, the, the hush hush is that uh, uh, after WrestleMania, he got arrested. <laughs> so. Oh, really? The, hear, the hearsay is that. He was arrested, so I think he's going to go do like 30 or 60 in the clink. Oh, wow. Well, that could all be like some fake rumor spread, and it, it could it could be that his leukemia is back again. Who knows? Well, I really hope that's not the case. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed P.O. Roman. Uh, but I have been like I have been enjoying the, the AEW. What they didn't implode when Cody left? Nope. Just the opposite. So they they've got this kid Hook that has only spoken like two or three times, but he goes in there and. Kicks like 
some massive ass. Um, turns out he's Taz's son. Oh, is he? Yep. Yeah, he does kind of look like Taz. You know, a very young, you know, clean-shaven uh, Finn, Finn Taz. But uh, he's actually teamed up with Danhausen, so now they have Hook has uh, his his son's stage name is is Hook. I know I sound like I'm working at a strip club. Uh, oh, because of the Red Hook District. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But his his wrestler name is Hook, so. Uh, and the whole crowd was was cheering for Hookhausen. Uh, I still don't week. know anything about Dan Housen. Uh, it's easy to find. Uh, I don't know much about him either. Uh, I don't think he can wrestle his way out of a wet paper bag. Uh, he had to come up with a gimmick, I guess, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So he did the, you know, he wasn't getting over just being himself and doing a few other things. So he put the makeup on and now he uh, like, you know, he, he's, he acts like a complete, you know, lunatic. So, uh, and he, and he does the hand point thing where he's, he's, he's cursing people. Mm. You know that goofy thing, but it works. There's something compelling about the dude, like in the in the makeup and costume and everything. <coughs> That's like, you know, you could be like, yeah, this might be be dumb as shit, but uh, it's entertaining dumb shit. So, and I'm the entertained dumb shit. I got you. I got you. And like it's something like a little different. Well, and they're doing I mean, that. They've got that. They've got the uh, the Owen Hart Invitational thing going on. Yeah. Where the rest uh, for uh, for the women and the men, where you got to wrestle down in brackets. But it's done like, you know, with cards. So once in a while a joker comes up and just like a mystery wrestler like like pops up and I think that's where they're gonna bring back the former uh world champion there. Ken, what's his name? Kenny Omega? Yeah. Yeah. I guess he had to disappear because he needed like four or five major surgeries. Who, uh, who was it that took the title off him? Wasn't it Hangman? Yeah. And now he's uh, the next pay per view. He's got a big thing with uh, Best in the World. Not likely, uh, but. Oh, CM. The CM punks. Well, as long as you keep him out of the UFC octagon, he, he does okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. I've never really been a CM Punk fan. Um, Neither. Uh, and I had a bigger... I, uh, I never liked him. I really hated him. Him and all that straight edge crap. Yeah. Um, and I really hated him even more because the story that I've told you before of the, mm -hmm. the, dude, the dude drag nozzle that couldn't pay me back 50 bucks, but he could go and follow the WWE around a Europe, a European tour. He could do that. 
but he couldn't pay me back. It's, you know, the $50 he borrowed off me at the con to get something. Well, if only he'd have been on the plane ride from hell. Yeah. Um, and of course, CM Punk was his favorite. Well, you know, he is a Paul Heyman guy. Mm -hmm. I do love me some Paul Heyman. I like it when they finally break down and let somebody attack Paul Heyman and do like a a, a move or two on him to beat the crap out of him. No, Brock beat the shit out of him a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brock's out on permanent injury right now too. He said, "I think I'm all done with wrestling." He's kind of done everything, you know. There is. Yeah. Without, you know, rinse and repeat. So, um, and with the amount of his last contract, yeah, he probably doesn't need to do anything ever again. So, yeah. I would, uh, I would agree with that. He could probably make more money uh, going on a summer convention circuit, signing signing his name, than than he would getting back in the ring. Oh, if he if he started doing cons or something, oh shit! I mean, yeah, he'd, that would... he'd probably charge five hundred dollars for the combo uh, picture and autograph. You know Stallone does comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a way, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, if you got $1,200 to pay him to sign something. Oh. Well, no. And now he's looking to uh, relaunch the Rambo franchise, but with a new actor. Yeah. He's too old to do shit. I'm like, no, just let it go. I'm okay with a reboot. Um, but, you know, it's got to be done right. And, you know, let, let's not just pick somebody who's just popular or whatever to, to play him. You know, um, I think I, I commented on a post about it and said, uh, Anthony Starr. Or uh, John Bernthal. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. I read that one. Yeah. And Anthony Starr, even though he plays Homelander, and he does a great job as Homelander, man. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, new uh, season's coming on uh, June, June 3rd. Yeah, so I got I to gotta finish watching, like, the last season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was on this show called Banshee that I recommend like to anybody who will listen. I'm like, dude, this show is awesome. It's got literally everything. You know, it's got crazy Native Americans. It's got uh, Amish people, Russian mob. Okay. Crazy Native Americans? Elizabeth Warren's that? No, real ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. More than one thousand twenty four percent. Yeah, you gotta you know, you got you gotta have some status to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh 
you, you have to qualify to be able to uh, get monthly stipend payments from the casino on your native land. In other words, was it that family guy that had a yeah the Indian casino, but the the chief of the tribe was uh, like Mel Brooks? Mm -hmm. Sounds about as Indian as I do. See, Tubi sending me. Uh, suggestions to watch for me. Uh, oh, Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. Yeah. Well, I did just watch uh, his, his Brooklyn movie the other night. Oh, Rumble in the Bronx? Rumble in the Bronx, yeah. Yeah, that's good shit. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Uh, Beverly, Hill, Beverly Hills Ninja. Ooh, the Goonies. And yes, I can do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> uh, Siberia with Keanu Reeves. Man of Tai Chi with Keanu Reeves. Lucky number Slevin. Hey, that was actually kind of good. Uh, Shanghai, the transporter, and the one with Jet Li. And Jason Statham. Yeah. Uh, find your favorite movie or show. Kung Fu Hustle, The Bernie Mac Show, The Masked Singer, Big Mama's House. Uh, I'd have to go with Kung Fu Hustle. What you think, man? She coming along? Yeah, looking good. We just hit the hour mark. Yay! This isn't this isn't bad progress for a fucking hour. Yeah. If only I could work on commissions this fast. Mm hmm. So, uh, I I signed up on this page. Uh, for this RPG company, like they're like their own thing, like the old TSR. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, of course, being a game channel, they have you know they have a Discord channel, online forums, and uh, they've got a Kickstarter that's about to go off. Of course, uh, you know they're on Twitter and Facebook too. It's called uh, the Evil Genius. They are coming out with a Highlander RPG. No fucking way. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. So. So I was, I was just. There's a, there's a couple of RPGs like I was checking out. And I was, I go, ooh. I go, I can pretty much guess what that's going to be about. Um, no matter no matter what campaign you play, uh, it's like smash the other guy and cut his head off or you lose. Pretty much, yeah. Well, you know, the, the reboot is actually happening. And uh, everybody's favorite British guy is doing, you know, I guess he's going to be Connor. So, yeah. Um, but Sean Connery's dead. <laughs> oh, that's the Scottish guy who everybody thinks is British. Right. Yeah. 
while he played an Egyptian Spaniard. In, in, <laughs> yep. The in movie a thong. Has, an Egyptian Spaniard in a thong. Yeah, it uh, it has its flaws, but you know it still holds a place in our hearts. Mm -hmm. I think this is the same company that did the uh, Blade Runner twenty twenty four RPG too. It's like, stop trying. You're never gonna beat the original. Speaking of that, what are your thoughts on this uh, this Top Gun sequel? No. Uh, I don't thoughts. care. I don't care because uh, I've never watched Top Gun. <laughs> I you never watched like, it. No, I don't. I don't. I don't like Tom Cruise. I mean, nobody does. I've never liked Tom. I like. I didn't like Tom Cruise when it was stu still cool to like Tom Cruise. I'm like, no. Don't like Although him. Although I've heard, I've heard Edge of Tomorrow is pretty badass. I mean, I've seen other movies that he's in. And luckily, other people on the cast have carried him enough that, you know, it, it was, you know, it was okay. But, well, you know, nothing that you'd nothing that you'd want to pay for that you should actually, you know, look at it and go, yeah, this is just like, you know, a TV movie because he's not good enough to pay to sit in a movie theater to watch that. I am very it. glad that he is. I am very glad that he is not in Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not in Doctor Strange. Well, if he wasn't Doctor Strange, he would be Doctor Strange. So, well, they were talking about him playing um, Tony uh, Stark, like the the alternate universe Tony Stark. Yeah. Turns out Disney didn't have enough money. <laughs> Disney's got enough money. <laughs> The mouse has fucking Mickey and or has a Goofy and Donald printing money at this point. Oh, by Goofy and Donald, you mean uh, Brandon and Kamala? Uh, <laughs> Speaking of all things Disney, I saw that link you sent me about a. Uh, the early spoilers on Obi Wan saying it's not any good. Mm. I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can believe that. I don't know if I, I want to believe that. I have high hopes for this man. That they're gonna, they're they're uh, geeks and gamers are afraid that they're going they're going to emancipate Obi Wan. Have him, have him get captured, and it's not Obi Wan that saves Luke from, uh, from the Empire. It ends up being an Inquisitor whose heart grew three sizes that day, but not any Inquisitor. An Inquisitor played by a woman of color, who uh, is probably not so straight edge, if you know what I mean. Mm. <clears throat> it's a trans lesbian woman of color. It always has to be something. Mm -hmm. Disney's like the government, they have to fix shit that's not broke.
Yeah, I signed myself up for another government program today, too. Oh, uh, yeah. The, they've got this thing going around. Uh, if you meet certain criteria, uh, which I did on possibly three things, but definitely two. So I just put down the two. Uh, to help you pay for uh, either your cell phone or your internet. So I went for internet. I don't pay a lot for internet now, but. Comcast uh, is like not just raping me, but like I'm Jody Foster in The Accused. Okay. And, and they got me up on the pinball machine, dude. How much are you paying for internet? I am paying 140 a month. For everything. For internet. You're paying 140 a month for internet? Yeah. Why? Uh, I, that's a very good question. Needless to say, I'm calling AT&T tomorrow. No, 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 no. Research Comcast Internet Essentials. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of qualifiers on there, but the biggest qualifier is if you have a child of school age, because now internet is considered a necessity. I mean, it, it, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> These fucking teachers, dude. So, internet essentials. Go ahead. Ask me how much I pay for my internet essentials. How much do you pay for internet essentials? $9.95 a month. Are you kidding me? No, I'm dead serious. My uh, my very vegan uh, cousin Rachel down in Florida told me about it because internet is like, you know, as Elon Musk has proven by just you know repositioning satellites, it's a it's it's pretty much a ripoff. It's like an easy cash cow, and now you know they know. Well, once you get Wi-Fi in your home, you're not going to be able to live without Wi-Fi in your home, especially in this age of, you know, online gaming and everything. Yeah, they're not, they're not wrong. So, if you have, uh, if you're low income, uh, if you've got, um, like, if you're on, like, SNAP benefits for food for the kids, mm -hmm. Anything like that, I think it's like an automatic qualifier. <coughs> um, also, any children of school age, it makes it automatic. Cool. Um, they just have to run you and everything through the system. And uh, they will probably try to fight you. Because... If you don't have internet, and then <laughs> shut up. Uh, <laughs> um, if you don't have internet, and then you call them up, be like, "Yeah, I'm calling about uh, internet. Uh, try to get on internet essentials." Blah 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 blah. You give them all your information. But if you're already paying money, they're not going to want to let you do it because. They're already got you like paying like a huge amount of money. Yeah, I figure they would try to fight me on it because um, everybody does on everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but but I I'll play the single dad card, man. I'm like play this play the single dad card. You get all, all them children at home that uh, need it for schooling and 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 work. Uh, 
you work from home. Well, what do you do for work? None of your business. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I sell feet pics on the internet, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. what yeah. What I do. yeah, fight fight with them uh, like tooth and nail. Will do. Because if you yeah, can... I gotta lower these fucking bills, dude. Well, yeah, I gotta pick up his income. Right off, right off the bat, uh, that'll tr trim your 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 cable bill by uh, 130 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll that'll help for sure. And then, wow. and then, plus, if you if you get like an email from uh, Comcast telling you 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 may qualify. To have the government pick up the tab uh, up to thirty dollars a month, yeah, for your for your internet. Yeah, I've gotten that email. Yeah, uh, if you qualify on any of those things, like really qualify, because they're gonna deep dive into it, and uh, you don't want to be like locked in a cell next to somebody from you know January sixth. No, I mean I. For lying, lying to the, the for lying to the feds, the only people that can lie to the feds are the feds, you know, like the FBI and and uh, you know, big tech, uh, big pharma, you know, and the and the list goes on. Of course, other members of the government. Crooks, all of them. Yep. And you know, I used to, I used to believe in government. I really did. Not really. I believe, I believe in small government. Well, uh, that that's me. Okay, I used to believe that there were, there were politicians who who wanted small government. There's not. I don't. I don't believe any of them anymore. At this point, you know, nobody's going to give up power once they have it. And, you know, I, just, I look at it when I see people who are like, "Well, such and such candidate cares about me." You probably believe the stripper really likes you too. Mm -hmm. They don't. I assure you. Right. So I'm gonna have to look up her hair. Uh, mm -hmm. She changed the color a couple of times during the show, and I want the blue or I want the purple and orange. Mm -hmm. I think it'll go with her outfit, but I don't think this cosplayer that I'm using the reference for really has her hair down. So probably I'm not. To, I'm gonna have to. Swoop it around and do some shit with it. Cool. Well, I figure we should uh, we should call this one. Yeah, probably right. Thanks for anybody that jumped in and checked this out, even for a few minutes, because. Uh, I know there were that there's like you know ten of the stream ten of the streams that I know of going on at the same time tonight. I hate to pull a firefly, but man, we might want to. I don't know shit. We might change days or something because I, I noticed there's a lot of shows on, but hell, there's a lot of shows on every day. Yeah, well, it's because you know 2020 made everybody a podcaster. I mean, oh my god, yeah, literally everybody.
I mean, we could we could move it to like a with like to like a weekend or, but it depends what your schedule is. Um, I don't know. I I kind of like the idea of Monday night. That works. Mm. I don't know. Well, there were a bunch of like unskit, you know, ones that popped up that don't usually do shows. Like uh, Global Frequency was like, and you know, an unannounced show until like a little over an hour ago. They're actually on the road somewhere in Massachusetts tonight. So, so oh, they cool. did it from they did it from uh, whatever a hotel they're vacationing in. Mm. B Rose is doing a bunch of pop up streams all the time now because his channel just got monetized. Damn it! And and he's pushing hard because he's gonna his book finally came out and it's funded and everything. But he's trying to get you know as much as he can for it. Well, sure. So. All right, we're gonna we're gonna sign off of this. We'll be back uh, next Monday, you know, until further notice, because uh, you know it is what it is. We didn't. Even, I even forgot to pop up this guy. I'm like, what the hell? Well, they figured it out real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, I'm gonna tell the part time gig. I was waiting on my uh, my general manager from that to come back from vacation. I'm going to tell her uh, that I'm going to two days a week during that because, yeah, it, it's taken. Yeah. Taking time away. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not good because this is my career. Yeah. yeah. 